Okay. Another thing. Every human born, whether a woman or a test tube, if it's a man's seed and a woman's egg, that baby will populate one day heaven or hell by their birth. That birth certificate, that birth from a woman, will populate heaven or hell. Now it's called a feast. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Every one his day. Now there are some that say his day there is his birthday. Now, Genesis 40 and Mark, uh, Matthew 14 and Mark 6 did say birthday. Now whether this was a birthday or not, his day, and we will see that there are certain days when it comes to the birthday roots to the foundation that there are certain days to set aside for gods. We'll get into that. But his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were going about, while they're having their day, that Job sent and sanctified them, and excuse me, rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now we don't know the state of Job's children. But we know that they feasted and had a good day. Whereas it caused Job to go out and sacrifice for his children. Had they cursed God or had they sinned. He didn't put on a party hat. He didn't bring in a birthday cake. He didn't call in the clowns. He called upon God. In case his children done wrong. Okay, now we get into the to the the cream. Maybe the, it was just the black uh, Oreo part of the cookie, but here we get into the cream part. Maybe you would want this first. But we need a Bible foundation, which is lacking from churches today, which is lacking from Christians who don't read their Bible. And that some have probably even turned this off because I turned them off because I've kicked their little gods. And I haven't even started kicking yet. What we've done is God kicking, not me. So from Genesis 40, Matthew 14, and Mark 6, what do we get? We get a birthday by an Egyptian. In the Bible... Egypt is reference to the world, the type of the world, where he tells his people, get out of there. He called his people out in the book of Exodus, and he told them not to go back. He told them, don't get horses, don't get gold, don't get silver, don't go to the place. And Solomon got the gold, got the horses, got the wives from there, and his life failed from that. Abraham goes down there and gets Hagar, and then Ishmael's produced trouble and problems. Egypt is a type of world that God says, don't go there, and we'll study more about Egypt later. Matthew 14 and Mark 6, what do we have? We have Roman, or Rome. Mystery Babylon, the seven hills that Revelation speaks about, drinking the blood of the saints, murdering them. The ones that crucified Jesus. Pontius Pilate who declared three times that Jesus was innocent. I find no fault in him. Still crucifying him upon a Roman cross. With those two foundations in Genesis 40, Matthew 14, and Mark 6 of a birthday of Egypt and Rome. 
Would God expect you to follow that example? I trolled not. The universal custom of observing Christmas as the birth of Christ, we're looking at birthdays, on December 25th is knowledgeable by all the historical authorities as having no basis as actual fact. So when your church celebrates the birthday of Jesus on December 25th, and you sing happy birthday to Jesus, we'll get to happy birthday in a minute, you are celebrating a historical authority acknowledged as not an actual fact. You are worshiping a lie. Read John 8, 44. I dare you to read that. John 8, 44. And I'll leave that to your own reading. King James Bible, please. Jesus Christ was born nowhere near December 25th in the dead of winter. And we'll get that with the wet cloth on Christmas and all that. As the Lord will have us do the study. We can't even get by this one yet. If the very day of Jesus' birth is put out in the Bible by God, that doesn't the fact tell us something. Nowhere in Scripture does God tell us when Jesus was born. Nowhere. Now we can assume... I mean, if you read the scriptures, it's probably, most likely, the Feast of Tabernacles, but that's not a proven fact. You can't say it's a fact. We can run the scriptures. It's just like December 25th. It's not a fact. But we got scriptures, but it's not a fact. It's not what God said. God did not say December 25th. He did not say the Feast of Tabernacles. If birthdays should be celebrated, why did God leave the date of his own son's birth out of Scripture? If we are to celebrate birthdays, God would definitely, surely praise his son, lift up his son, that we know may know his birthday, that we can celebrate in the church. Linda Reynolds, R-A-N-N-E-L-L-S, Lewis, in her book, Birthdays, page 12. Birthdays have been celebrated for thousands of years. In every civilization where the development of a calendar made an organized reckoning of birth dates possible, the horoscopes of ruling monarchs, their successors, and rivals had to be cast with care and birthday omens exactly examine for the prospects of the mighty would affect the prospects of the entire society. The false science of astrology, of course, makes a great deal out of the positions of the sun, moon, and stars. Now remember the moon. At the moment of one, at the moment or day of one's birth, astrology teaches that the position of the sun, moon, and stars at the moment of one's birth determines their future destiny, their character, their personality, talents, health, and so forth. They cast horoscopes. You find them in every newspaper, and you notice how the how most horoscopes are also on the page for the kiddies, the comics. Isn't that interesting? A page, you know, with cartoons for kitties and the horoscopes are there too. Imagine a guy in prison picking up a horoscope and reading, Today you'll find new love. Ah! Change newspapers real quick. You ever notice too, if you buy five newspapers and read the same horoscope, they're not the same in any state? They cast horoscopes or birth charts to understand the, su the supposed significance of a person's birthday. Astrology in the Word of God plainly shown 
is pagan, false religious deception, a fraud, a mythological junk. Psalm, uh, Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Run the scripture on this one. Isaiah 47. Verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. The foundation of the world's religions today, especially of that Roman church. The traces of all religions go back to Babylon. Even what's being practiced in the Baptist churches today. Oh, so we know Babylon. Let's continue over to verse 13, shall we? Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let not the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things. They shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. The list I just read you. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm them, nor fire to sit before them. Listen, they can't even predict that they're going to die by flame, that God's going to cast them out. They can't even predict that. How can they tell you your future? How many psychics can tell the day they're going to die, but yet Jesus knew the day, the hour, and the minute that he was going to die, and the way he was going to die. No one can do that. Lewis continues. In Egypt, Genesis 40, Pharaoh, Households of the same period, birthdays were celebrated similarly. A part of a family budget was set aside to buy birthday garlands, that's reefs, and animals for sacrifice. Just as we plan to spend a certain sum for balloons, party hats, and ice cream cake, that's pages 12 to 13. We celebrate birthdays the same way the Egyptians did. They just brought animals and garland. You ever wonder why some birthday parties they allow a donkey or a petting zoo to come? It comes from Egypt. You thought it was a brand new idea, you know? Dazzle, wind, dizzle the kids. The only thing is you don't sacrifice the animals. You pay the, an you pay the money for the animals. You sacrifice out of your wallet. But yet, yeah, it's Egyptian f uh, foundation. And I told you already, Egypt is a type of world, and God does not want you there. So already, birthday should tell you, that's not where God wants you. The offer goes on, among prosperous Greek families, a birth feast, now we're in the New Testament, a coming of age feast, and feast after death, held on the anniversary of the death of the birth, were reserved. But otherwise, there were no annual birthday ceremonies. The Greeks would celebrate a birth, a child's birth feast. They would celebrate a coming of age feast, you know, sweet 16 and 18. A feast after death, someone died. But the Greeks would not have an annual birthday celebration. The birthdays of the immortals, gods, G-O-D-S, small g, were ritually acknowledged once a month. However, the third day of each month became sacred to Athena, A-T-H-E-N-A, -E Ares, A-R-E-S, and Saturn, for instance. So the, the Greeks would choose a day, usually the third day of each month, to celebrate gods. That is a quick running of the Greeks and the birthday rites that we have today. The whole message of God is to teach us to humble ourselves and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. 
to get rid of ego and self-centeredness. Birthdays have the opposite effect. 